You've seen another video tutorial in preparation for this class where we showed how two oscillations, a horizontal and a vertical oscillation, could be combined to different phases, and we got various linear, elliptical, and circular polarizations. That video suggests that the natural polarization states are horizontal and vertical, but actually there are three different equally important polarization basis states, and this video is going to talk to you about all three of them, how to represent them with complex numbers, and why they're equally important. So the first one is one that you just saw in that video. We can talk about it this way. We can say that there is a horizontal linear oscillation. I'll mark it this way to suggest that the electric field is oscillating back and forth like this in time. We can name this state. Let's call it the horizontal polarization state, and we'll write out some math for it in a second. So what is that state? Let's get a unit vector for this direction. We're going to call that the h hat direction. So this is the direction of h hat. And we could say that that horizontal state is given by the following expression. It oscillates in time. So let's write cosine of omega t for that. And then it points in the h hat direction. So we'll write h hat up there. And I'm going to draw a little red dot at the tip of this arrow here, next to the h, to indicate that at time zero, that's where this state is pointing. It's at its maximum extension pointing in the plus h hat direction. We also saw vertical oscillations in the video do exactly the same thing. We draw sort of oscillation like this. It's time zero value. I'll draw a red dot up here to say that's where it is when you plug in t equals zero to the mathematical expression. We'll call that the vertical state, and the vertical state's mathematical representation will be pretty similar. It also varies in time, the cosine of omega t, and it points in the upward and downward direction, so we're going to de define another unit vector called v hat for vertical, and that's what we'll write in here. So here's our first of the three important polarization basis states, the horizontal and vertical states. If we wanted to write this in complex notation, it would be pretty straightforward to do. We could say if we had an electric field given by some amplitude E naught, and then the horizontal state H, we could write that as the real of E naught, the amplitude, and then the cosine of omega t, we'll just write it as e to the minus i omega t inside of this real operation, and then that unit vector h hat. If I take the real of this expression, the only thing that's not a real number is e to the minus i omega t, and the real e to the minus i omega t is cosine of minus omega t, which is also equal to cosine of plus omega t, because cosine is an even function. So much for writing this simple h state or the v state in complex notation. Let's push it along a bit. The second important basis set that we can think about is where one of the two states is at plus 45 degrees like this. And it oscillates in time as well. An oscillation of this sort. Relative to the horizontal axis, this is pointing at plus 45 degrees here. So we will name that the P state for plus 45. And its companion, of course, is a state that points downward like this and oscillates up up and down like this in time that's pointing at minus 45 degrees so the m gives us the letter to define that state and we'll again draw dots at the tips to say where these states these basis states are pointing at exactly time t equals zero and the reason we're interested in this is because we saw in the last video if we make various combinations of h and v, we can make circular states or elliptical states, and we might want to pass that light through a plus 45 degree polarizer. So we're interested in the component of this field represented in, say, this basis state. Let's write that out. So the p state can be written pretty straightforwardly. It still has cosine of omega t time dependence. 
and now it's got a more complicated unit vector. We're pointing up and to the right. We can write that as the sum with proper normalization of h hat plus v hat. And you can see that yourself. The p is pointing in the plus 45 degree direction. That's a combination of horizontal and vertical. And the m state follows very similarly. We'll make that appear here. So there that is. But let's think about how we write the p state in complex notation. So again, we would have an, a magnitude of field E0, and then we would have the p state. We'll write that as the real of something that's complex. We'll start out by just a generic language of E0, e to the minus I omega t, and instead of writing h hat, let's write something that we haven't defined yet called p hat. So this is just another state. The only thing that's different from here is that we've replaced h hat with p hat. Well, what is the p hat unit vector? That vector pointing in this direction, we kind of know what that is. It's just 1 over root 2 h hat plus v hat. So let's be explicit about that and make that appear over here. So there's our full written out expression in terms of h hat and v hat for what the p state would be. And just to be super clear about that, this lets us say that the p hat unit vector for the plus 45 degree state is 1 over root 2 h hat plus v hat. If that's all we were doing, it wouldn't be that exciting. I'll, we'll box that off to say that's what the p hat state is. The m hat state is so simple to get from that that we're not going to write it out. But there's a third equally important pair of polarization basis states. And this is the one where things get kind of interesting. So consider a state that's pointing this way at time 0. So I'll draw a dot there to emphasize that. But then this vector is rotating circularly. It's not oscillating back and forth like this. It, its tip is rotating like this, like a clock hand. And because it's rotating anti-clockwise, we're going to name this state letter A. And we can also think of what's the second vector in this case going to be. It's going to be a vector pointing in that same direction. But it's rotating its tip clockwise. And so we're going to name it state C. So we have a start point for each one. These basis states at time 0, they're both arrows are pointing to the right, but then they rotate in opposite directions. So now we got to figure out how to write these states. So what is the A state? What's the anti-clockwise state look like? Let me write it out for you and then unpack it. We saw in the previous video that a, clock, that a counterclockwise propagating state, that's a state where the horizontal oscillation maximizes first, and then at a quarter cycle later, a quarter period later in the oscillation, that's when the vertical component is maximal. So let's write out the expression for that and then start explaining why it's the correct expression. So we're still going to have a 1 over root 2 because we're going to add together two unit vectors. The horizontal component of this is going to look very familiar. Cosine of omega t h hat. But then the vertical oscillation isn't a cosine function of omega t, it's a sine function. So I'm going to emphasize that, that there's this, there's this time delay happening here. Time delay of a quarter cycle, a quarter period. So the horizontal oscillation maximizes a quarter period later, the vertical oscillation maximizes. And a very similar expression is going to be for the counterclockwise state. It's also going to have the same prefactor. It's going to have the same cosine of omega t. But it's going to oscillate its vertical component differently. So the only change is this minus sign. So now there's a time advance of a quarter period 
rather than a time delay of a quarter period. That's what the counterclockwise one does. It, if it's rotating this way in a clockwise circle, it's going to be a vertical up maximum first and then a quarter period later, a horizontal maximum. So let's write that now in complex notation. The circular state, by the same analogy, let's look at what the anti-clockwise state looks like. So we're trying to figure out what an electric field strength E naught times the anti-clockwise basis state looks like. Let's again make the same analogy that it should be equal to the real of E naught e to the minus omega t, i omega t for the time dependence, and then some state we're going to call lowercase a hat. And we don't know what that is. It's not as simple as p hat, which was just the sum of these two vectors giving me pointing in 45 degrees. How do I add up two vectors to point in the direction of something that's oscillating like a circle rather than a line? That's where things get interesting here. And that is the whole point of this video. So let's just take this expression for a that we had up here and plug it in. So we can get this expression to work if we do the following. We will write e naught e to the minus i omega t and then a 1 over root 2 and I'm just going to assert for the moment and see if it works that it's going to be instead of h hat plus v hat it's going to be h hat plus e to the i pi over 2 v hat. Just that one change. What we're hoping is that this factor of e to the i pi over 2, as we said, we want a time delay v oscillation relative to the h oscillation. Let's see if this works out on the next line of this. Let's factor out the e naught and the root 2. We'll get two different vector components here real e to the minus i omega t h hat and then what about the v hat component that's going to be real of e to the minus i now that's multiplied by omega t minus pi over 2 this was plus pi over 2 over here so minus minus times v hat now let's look at what these things are the real of this gives us cosine of omega t h hat, and the real of that gives us cosine of omega t minus pi over 2. So that's our convention here. We have e to the minus i omega t. The real of that is cosine of minus omega t, or cosine of positive omega t. By the same token, when we take the real of this complex expression, we just take everything that's multiplying minus i, and we make that the argument of cosine down here. So the pi over 2 shows up as omega t minus pi over 2 v hat. And that, if you do a simple trick identity, you think of this as cosine of alpha minus beta. And you know that that's cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And with pi over 2 having the property that it's 1 when the sine of pi over 2, this becomes sine of omega t. You can work that out. And so, bingo, that works. It matches exactly what we said it was going to be up here. So we have, an e, we have a 1 over root 2, like we had up here. Cosine of omega t, h hat, plus sine of omega t, v hat. I'll put the v hat there just to make it clear. And so we've indeed got the delay that we wanted. So we now know that multiplying by e to the i plus pi over 2 is a delay. So now we're able to pull out the expression for what this a hat vector is. We now know that the a hat vector equals exactly this thing we stuck in here. It's 1 over root 2. h hat plus e to the i pi over 2 v hat. Now e to the i pi over 2, if you remember, is just equal to i. So you'll sometimes see it written that way. 1 over root 2 h hat plus i v hat. 
And by a similar analysis, the clockwise unit vector c hat is 1 over root 2 h hat minus i v hat. So we've got a basis set here that's circular in terms of the h and v vectors. Now what's really interesting that we'll wrap up with is that these are complex vectors. It's kind of a weird a weird thing that they're the sum of two unit vectors with an imaginary number in between the two of them. And this sort of expression is only meaningful in the context of time oscillation. I'm going to write that down for you. In the next video, we're, we're going to show instead of just how to write the P, M, A, and C unit vectors, basis vectors in terms of H and V, we want to do the opposite. We want to show that it's just as easy and just as natural to express the HV vectors in terms of circular states. And that'll be a follow-on to this video.